I think there's no doubt that we are right now in an era of unprecedented technological advance. Digital technology in particular is radically transforming how we produce, how we store, how we manage, how we disseminate, and how we consume content. But how did we get here? Let's take a quick look at the history of digital media. And by looking at the history of digital media, we can understand how we got to the digital media that we have today. And we can understand how it is so powerfully shaping life in the 21st century. A look back to a time long, long, long ago, the mid-90s, before the proliferation of the public internet, the digital media industry was focused on systems for creating, editing, enhancing, recording, and playing back visual and audio media. Most often, this application was found in the media and entertainment industries. But there were some other important companies in that period. Uh, there was Apple with its media-friendly computers and software. There was Adobe with Photoshop. There was Corel with its Corel Draw uh, desktop publishing software. And these companies were all doing work to increase the, the amount of people who had the power and capability to produce digital content. This was the mid-90s. But with the growth of the internet and with the explosion of new digital products and services, there came an entirely new category within digital media, a category we've come to now know as new media. The term new media reflected the transition from analog to digital forms of media creation. But it also reflected the transition from analog to digital forms of media consumption using the new technologies as a platform or a mechanism to deliver and distribute the new media content. With the internet came these new large bandwidth pipes, as it were, deployed across the world with the help of companies, technology companies like Cisco, as it became feasible and as it became more affordable for content delivery companies that took advantage of the proliferation of the internet and took advantage of the availability of new connection points between countries, between communities, and between individuals that came with the introduction of the World Wide Web. Companies like Akamai uh, sprung up to move rich media, multimedia files, videos, audio files, um, animations across the internet using new powerful streaming audio and streaming video solutions. And that transition was very significant uh, in the evolution of what we now consider digital media. On the audio side, with the internet came the use of new file formats like MP3 files. With the internet also came the rise of a new peer-to-peer -peer sharing networks led by companies like Napster. There are some more controversial companies that dealt with P2P or peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and these include BitTorrent and another service called Grokster. Uh, they were very, very critical in the, and very significant in the distribution of music files and video files, legal and illegal. And we hear a bit more about the, the intellectual property issues related to the work and the facility provided by these services as we go on. But with these services, with the Apple and iTunes, with BitTorrent, with Napster, exploded the distribution and proliferation of digital content. This explosion decimated the traditional music industry as users uh, started to crave and started to desire um, better and different ways for accessing the tunes that they loved. And you had this transition from having to buy, for example, an album with many songs to being able to select the song that you want um, and downloading that and that alone and composing your own virtual albums. All of these transitions were very important in creating a sense of public appetite and public interest in digital media. And it came about as a result of the, the popularity and increasing accessibility of the internet, but also as a result of the development of new tools and new platforms and new services that allowed people to access the content that they wanted. On the film and television side, we had industries 
um, having to intelligently reduce their commercial risk by partnering with some of these new media companies. So traditional uh, broadcast firms found themselves having to come into alliance with new media firms. You had the, the famous or infamous Microsoft and NBC Alliance, which created MSNBC. You also saw some very unlikely partnerships where online-only firms like America Online or AOL found themselves coming into uh, partnership and eventually being bought out by traditional media firms like Time Warner. All of this spelt the development or the evolution of new digital distribution models for content. But the outcome is far from clear, as broadly successful revenue models are still in formation. So now today, we see the emergence of an entirely new category of broadcasters, digital broadcasters, as it were, that have no roots in the traditional broadcasting industry. Companies like Netflix and Hulu now provide movies and television programming direct to an online-only audience. Uh, these films have completely upended the traditional broadcasting models, releasing entire series at one time and creating a new sense of wonder and possibility for the audiences that they serve. Now, even though these films are arising and even though they are playing a very significant role in the evolving broadcast and communications landscape, the future of where this all is going is still unclear. And that's why this whole history of digital media is so important for us to understand. There is much to learn from how we got here, and there's even more to discover in terms of where we're going from this place. So here are some things that you can ask your students to do or you can investigate as part of the, the exploration of the history of digital media. I've only covered a very, very brief um, aspect of the significant transitions. We've moved from an era where media meant traditional radio, traditional television, traditional movie making, to an era where anyone can now, using the technology and using the internet, develop content and distribute it to a global audience. That's very significant. And the significance of it um, creates opportunities for the Caribbean that we'll do well to explore. So here are a few things that we can think about as we go through the brief history of digital media. These are exercises or questions that you can do in your classes, with your students, or as a project. Why not complete a timeline of the major digital media development milestones? Investigate what were the major transition points in moving from analog to digital. Identify which companies, which tools, which products, which services, which platforms played a major part in transforming the status quo. We can also investigate the major changes digital media has had on our lives, the social impact, the personal impact. How has it changed the way we interact one with the other? We can also investigate the economic and political impact of the history of digital media. There are many very important economic considerations that have come about as a result of the capacity digital media creates to distribute resource without having to recreate resource. Finally, let us consider the impact digital media has had on daily life. I'd like you to consider the, the various technologies, the various tools that have impacted your own journey in digital media. What are some of the specific products or specific services or specific tools that you have been using to create digital media? When did they come on the scene? What was there before the tools that you're using? Let's really make this an opportunity to investigate how we got here. Remember, a look at the history of digital media can help us understand how we got the technology that we enjoy today, but it can also help us understand how it's shaping the technology we will be using tomorrow.